me to repeat it. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, all love. Let's affirm that together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, all love. Let's take that statement within. And affirm it silently to yourself. And with a trust, an unwavering trust, an impregnable faith in the unfailing power of God, we affirm together again aloud our statement of faith together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, all love. And so it is. Unity is a spiritual movement that includes, among other things, publishing. And our most popular publication is the Daily Word magazine, which has been in print for nearly 100 years. So for today's Daily Word, I invite up Board Vice President and Treasurer Veronica Carter. Today's daily word for Sunday, November the 13th, is guidance. And the affirmation is, I use divine wisdom to find my way. <clears throat> when I'm pondering a perplexing question or I need to make an important choice, I reach beyond human reasoning to the limitless wisdom of divine mind, never further away than my next thought. <coughs> Excuse me. After clarifying my question and considering my available options, I release the situation, <clears throat> focusing on, instead on the divine presence within. I affirm I am using divine wisdom to show me the way. In prayerful silence, peace envelops me. As I conclude my prayer time and resume my activities, I may experience a flash of insight or a more gradual understanding. <clears throat> However it happens, I trust my next steps will become clear to me. Confident in my divine guidance, I move forward with calm assurance. In the Bible verses, Matthew 6, but strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, <clears throat> and all these things will be given to you as well. And I'm going to repeat the affirmation one more time and ask you to repeat it after me. I use divine wisdom to find my way. Together, I use divine wisdom to find my way. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Veronica. And it is in that spirit of divine guidance that we turn within and pray together as a community. Prayer is the foundation of the unity movement. And we join now with silent unity, our 24-hour prayer ministry, holding the high watch for one another and for all those in our lives for whom we pray, as well as the world at large. And so we just remember who we are, what we are. The radiant life, light, love, wisdom, and power that God is, is right here where we are, right here within us. Wherever we are, God is. And so we hold this in our hearts as we turn within to that inner sanctuary of prayer. The greatest barrier between God, the divine mind, spirit, and ourselves rests within our consciousness. 
and it most often shows up as fear and manifests as unforgiveness. If you're feeling any constriction in your body, any thought in your mind relating to something said or done to you or someone you care for, perhaps something that you may have said or done that you've judged yourself harshly for. If there's anything in your past, whether it's minutes or decades in the past that is causing you suffering, in this moment I invite you to be free through the gift and the blessing of forgiveness. Forgiveness is a gift we give to ourselves. It is not condoning past acts, making others' behaviors okay. It is lifting ourselves, unburdening ourselves, that we may open our hearts and make room for more of the good that God has in store for us. So will you join me this morning in taking a deep breath? If you will affirm after me, I forgive and I am free. Together, I forgive and I am free. 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 We are free. Unlimited right now. It is in that consciousness of freedom and forgiveness that we turn our attention to praying with others. And so when we pray affirmatively, we do so with an awareness that God can never be apart from us, away from us, in an up there, out there place. God is right here. And so we pray from that divine within us, Seeing God in everything, seeing God in everyone. Knowing that no matter what it is that may be troubling our hearts or those we care about, the affairs of the world, the affairs within our families, our neighborhoods, our communities, we trust that God is mighty in the midst of it. God is the light that dispels all illusion of darkness and separation. And so with each breath, we let the light in. And with each breath out, we let the light within us out, shining forth for all. So no longer do we see people, including ourselves, as less than or broken or tired or sick or impoverished. Rather, we see through that single eye of spirit. As it said in the scripture, seek first the kingdom of God. And all these things, all the good will be, will be added unto us, will, be, will bless our lives, will be made manifest. And where is the kingdom? As the master teacher said, the kingdom of heaven is within us. And so we remember this and hold it in our hearts as we release any concern for specific outcomes and trust in divine order. And we release and let go and give thanks. We give thanks for this time of prayer. We give thanks that what we ask for in prayer, in spirit, is already done. And we are so blessed and so grateful for this spiritual community, the opportunity to pray together in spiritual community. And as it is, so we let it be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Amen and amen. And we will begin our time of meditation in just a moment. But I invite you to just settle into your seats and you may even want to close your eyes as we just let that daily word of guidance sink into and flourish within our hearts.
I invite you to take this moment to breathe in fully and completely and feel the presence of spirit as we move into this time of meditation. You breathe in and feel a calm as it moves through the physical body. We relax the physical body to become more aware of the spiritual nature of being. That is true always. And we just simply remember it more fully when we get quiet, when we are in this place of prayer and meditation. So we feel this calm as it moves through our entire physical body relaxing all of the muscles and tissues and cells. And we feel that relaxation move through the face and jaw and neck, into the shoulders, up and down the back, adjusting and aligning. With every breath, we are more at peace. This calm continues to move through us, through the chest and abdomen, up and down the arms, hands and fingers down into the hips and thighs and knees and calves, ankles, feet and toes. Just breathe in this calm, this serenity, this peace of God and let it fill you. If there are any areas of discomfort, any areas that are in need of healing, we breathe into those the healing, light, and love of God. Mm. There's a divine intelligence, a healing God mind that lives in every cell of our being. Our opportunity is to simply get out of the way of the good of God. So we let go fears, doubts, excuses, we let go reasons that things should not work out. And instead, we focus on the good of God that is seeking to express to us and through us. If there are any areas of your life that are in need of healing, relationships, finances, well, whatever it might be, breathe into those areas the healing light and love of God. And as you let go, whew, let go and let God, let go and let God be God. You don't have to control it all. All you can do is take charge of your life, point yourself in a direction. Listen for the, the uh, guidance of God, the direction, the answers, that divine intelligence that is seeking to help you along your way. Listen, feel it. Know it within yourself. You don't need to make excuses for why life isn't working out. The opportunity that we have today and every day is to simply align with the divine, to go with the flow, to be in God awareness, in God expression. So feel that presence, feel you right now. Know that Wherever you are, God is. At this moment, throughout the day, throughout your life. Let's take a moment to go more deeply within as we rest in the silence. It has been said that God is a friend of the silence. So we make time each day to have that stillness, that place of, of higher awareness. So we can have an infilling, a reminder that God is seeking to express to us, through us, all around us, and even as us. We no longer need to make excuses for life. We no longer need to put off what we are guided to do. 
We take charge of our lives. We move forward with courage and faith and inner knowing and confidence. Let us claim this day as our day to know God even more, to be God in this world, to touch the lives of others in positive ways. We allow our full awareness to come up to this moment in consciousness and in prayer. We say, thank you, God. We pray in gratitude to draw to us more to be grateful for. We fill ourselves with gratitude as we pray after the nature of the indwelling Christ presence. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Who are we? Sometimes I think we forget just who we are. There's labels that we give ourselves. We're a family member, uh, mother, father, daughter, son, brother, sister, aunt, uncle. Maybe we label ourselves based on the job that we do or have done. Maybe we're retired. Maybe we label ourselves as a minister or a doctor or a business person. Maybe we label ourselves as our gender or age or size. These are labels we give ourselves. And we need to remember that we are more than the labels that we give ourselves and others. There's more to us than that. Remember that we are spiritual beings having this human experience, not human beings having a spiritual experience. There is a spiritual presence in every moment. There is a spiritual solution to every challenge. There is a spiritual direction to every opportunity. We have whatever it takes to do what is ours to do. And yet we look for reasons that things happen. We try to find answers to these human dilemmas. We try to figure it all out. And all we really need to do is to ask one simple question. This moment, this day, this life, what is mine to do? And then listen. Listen for internal guidance or direction. Look for the signs and signals. Maybe you already know. It's just about reminding yourself, what is mine to do? What is mine in my authentic uniqueness? What is mine to do? Something that you do that is not the same as anybody or everybody else woman named Joan Walsh Angland said this, a bird does not sing because he has an answer. He sings because he has a song. We each have songs. We each have a uniqueness. Our job is not to outwit life, but to live it fully. And yes, we have challenges. We have them, maybe you're having one right now. Maybe you're dealing with some, some difficult situations. We also have opportunities and sometimes the challenges are kind of disguises to the truth of a matter, which is that they may work out to be opportunities. Some of the things that I thought were some of the worst things in my life turned out to be some of the best things in my life. These all help us to grow our soul, which I believe is one of the primary reasons we're here, to express as much of God as we can and to grow, grow our soul. There's not a need for us to repeat lessons all of the time. Sometimes we do try to outwit life. People do a lot to avoid responsibility or work for that matter. 
I don't know how many of you remember from way, way back, maybe you saw some films of a man named W.C. Fields. I'm going to be doing a W.C. Fields impression shortly, so be prepared. Well, somebody was visiting W.C. Fields in the hospital, and they were surprised when they noticed he was reading the Bible. This was so uncharacteristic that they asked him what he was doing. And he answered, looking for loopholes. He had a way of saying things, finding reasons to make things work his way. He once said, the laziest man I ever met put popcorn in his pancakes so they'd turn over by themselves. Okay, that's enough of that. Well, we make excuses. We're always looking for, or at least sometimes, we're looking for a way out. It's kind of a natural thing that we've developed. We need to be able to take personal responsibility for our lives. I remember being a young child and my mom just made a big plate of chocolate chip cookies. And then she had to go off someplace and she said, I don't want you to touch one cookie on this plate. I said, okay. So she left. I ate several of the cookies. Then I took them across the way to the park, shared most of them with everybody else. But I left one. When she came home, she said, what are you doing eating these cookies? I told you. You told me not to eat one cookie. That's the one. Uh, I probably was grounded, but I was only about seven by the time that happened. So I think I was just um, admonished in other ways. But yet we, we avoid responsibility sometimes. Sometimes we procrastinate. We put things off. I've been told procrastination is life's layaway plan. Somebody wrote this poem, procrastination is my sin. It only brings me sorrow. I know that I should stop it. In fact, I will tomorrow. There's things that people do not do, even though they say they want to. They put them off. Exercise. Luckily, I exercised this morning so I can share this. Um, meditate. Deal with irritations. Get organized. What is on your list? Your to-do list that is a not yet done list. People put off trying something entirely new. Why? Because they fear being wrong. Or they fear starting something that they can't complete. We like to escape difficulty sometimes. Or compliance for that matter. Once in a great while, I've used this excuse, but I'm really against it and hardly ever do it. And that is to ask for forgiveness versus asking for permission. To me, it's not clever, but cowardly. If you are needing to do something and you know it requires the okay of somebody else, then have the fortitude to be able to approach that person and ask for permission, not just do it and ask for forgiveness. There's rules. We have rules that we live by. They don't always make sense. I found some outdated laws that I want to share with you. In Pennsylvania, the penalty for cursing is a 40 cent fine. However, if God is mentioned in the curse, the fine is 67 cents. It's illegal to mispronounce the name of the city of Joliet, Illinois. Or is it Joliet? I could be in trouble already. In Utah, the law requires that daylight be seen between two dancing partners. In San Francisco, you are not permitted to carry a basket suspended from a pole. It's unlawful for goldfish to ride on a Seattle, Washington bus unless they lie still. And in Natchez, Mississippi, it's against the law for elephants to drink beer. 
What? In Muncie, Indiana, you cannot bring fishing tackle into a cemetery. Now, all these laws, these rules, must have made some sense at the time they were created. But looking back, being in today's world, they just don't make sense, do they? Well, in Jesus' time, there were many laws that Jewish people were required to follow, including not working on the Sabbath. This is from John chapter 5. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called in Hebrew, Beth Zatha, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew he had been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Now, just aside, there was a belief that angels stirred up the waters and the first people to get into the waters were healed. Well, Jesus turned to him and said, stand up, take your mat and walk. And at once the man was made well and he took up his mat and he began to walk. Now, that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been cured, it is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. But he answered them, the man, who, the man who made me well said to me, take up your mat and walk. And they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take it up and walk? The man told the Jews, it was Jesus who had made him well. Therefore, the Jews started persecuting Jesus because he was doing such things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, my father is still working, and I also am working. For this reason, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because he was not only breaking the Sabbath, but he, he was also calling God his own father, thereby making himself equal to God. In truth, of course, we know throughout his ministry, he was helping people to see in new and different ways to get beyond their excuses, beyond their seeming limitations. There is no need for excuses. There's no need to go through life looking for loopholes. We just need to decide when this man who was laying down on his mat decided to believe Jesus, his healing was instant. We read in the Old Testament, in Job, you will decide on a matter and it will be established for you and light will shine on your ways. See, it's really about us making decisions for the highest and best in every aspect of our lives. Remember, there's a spiritual presence in every moment. There is a spiritual solution to every challenge. There is a spiritual direction to every opportunity. We need to remember who we are. I want to share with you the story of Ben Hooper. Now, Ben Hooper was born in 1870 in the foothills of Tennessee. His mother was unmarried. His father was unknown, so he was shunned by everybody. At age three, other parents did not allow their kids to play with him because he was one of those kids who did not live according to their ways of living. In school, he hated recess for, because nobody else would play with him. Saturday was even worse. So here he was, growing up, being ostracized. Whenever he went to the store uh, with his mother, the people around him would ask, 
What are you doing here? Who is your father? About age 12, he heard about a new minister in town who was kind and understanding and accepting. And he went to church for the very first time. And then he went back again and again. He was always at the very back so he could get out quickly. But about the seventh Sunday, he went and the message was so moving. He felt that it was specifically for him that the preacher was saying, Ben Hooper, you are somebody. And it gave him hope. The service was over before he could get out. He tried to run, but he was blocked. He was stuck there with all the people around him. When he felt a hand on his shoulder, he looked up and he saw the minister who said to Ben, whose boy are you? Well, the whole church fell silent. Everyone wanted to hear the answer to this question they'd been asking for 12 years. And a smile grew on the minister's face. And he said with a grin, I know whose boy you are. By the family resemblance, it is unmistakable. You are a child of God. At that point, he gave Ben a slap on the back and said, that's quite an inheritance you've got there, boy. Now go and see to it that you live up to it. Well, Ben Hooper grew up to be the governor of Tennessee, and he credited that single day as the one that changed his life and gave him the light to see his way as a child of God. What's going on for you today? You have quite an inheritance. It's up to you to go out and live up to it. We're not here to find excuses. We're here to live life fully. We're not here to look for loopholes, but to believe and know that we're here on purpose, that we have a purpose, that we have a reason for being. We have a uniqueness about us. We have an inheritance. It's up to us to go out and live up to it. Remember who we are. Remember, you have what it takes to do what is yours to do. Yes, you and I will face challenges. We may occasionally make excuses. We may occasionally look for loopholes, look for the way out. What we need to do is to take a breath in when we're facing any kind of a challenge at all. And remember that there is a spiritual presence in every moment, that there is a spiritual solution to every challenge, that there is spiritual direction to every opportunity. You have what it takes, whatever it takes to do what is yours to do. Remember who you are. I know you anywhere. The likeness is unmistakable. You are a child of God. Live up to your inheritance. You have a song to sing. God bless you. Columbus Coalition for the Homeless and AARP Ohio. Let's give them a hand as well for just ah, working so hard to bring and to build and to strengthen those connections. It's really the community, you know, that is the lifeblood of a, of a, of a thriving and prosperous organization. So thank you both for planting those seeds. All right, dear friends, um, let us stand and we will affirm our prayer for protection. Ah, before we do that, I forgot. Next Sunday is our Thanksgiving potluck. How could I forget that? We have a sign-up sheet out in the lobby. Come and bring an appetite. If you'd like to bring a dish to share, put your name and the type of dish you'd like to bring. All right. Yeah,
The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And as we close our service today, know that we are enfolded in the, in the grace of God, and we know and we know with our hearts that everything that we do is helping to cultivate peace. And so we join together in song, celebrating number three in our hymnals, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Amen.